Okay, today I wanted to talk about gritting and grinding it. Um, y'all, my dog is like sending me on a wild goose chase. Don't know what she's doing as usual. Um, but today I was, you know, well, yesterday I started making more plans as far as how far I want to go with the new businesses that I started and the businesses that I currently have. And one has taken off. One is, took off like last year and it's still been doing great. And But the second one that I, the adventure that I did, I didn't think it was going to turn out so well. But it turned out really, really great. And um, it's a good thing when you find something that you're really good at. And you get to do it and help other people in, in the process of it. And help people who can't help themselves even doing that so I don't know what they talking about some teenagers but anywho um yeah it, it really makes you feel really really good but I started planning on what I was going to do next and I was like dang you know um yeah I make more money now however um, I have to use that money very wisely because I don't know, you know, I because I have, you know, new ventures, I have to make sure that I have the funds to replenish that adventure. And not only that, replenish myself for, you know, making myself live and eat and things like that. So um, I know when I first started my first business, um, I was literally homeless. I literally was homeless when I started that, when I started that lipstick business. It was like I didn't have enough money. I was doing it while I was at home, but it got to the point where, um, well, at the point when I I did make the decision, I didn't have to choose. I knew I was just gonna have um, less to work on. I was gonna have to, you know, probably eat at the soup kitchen or something like that, which is not bad because they really do have good soup and I volunteer there a lot. So it wasn't going to be really, you know, it wasn't difficult for me. And then most of the people I'm there with are, you know, very cordial. They're very nice and they would love to have somebody to talk to them, you know, um, and it it was a workout, a win-win, but what really got me was, um, I ended up being homeless that time because, I had to make a decision um, based off of where I lived. I was in a place where I did not want to be. It was like I hated that place. Like, no, I really loved. I loved the area because it was close to everything. It was close to downtown, but the place itself was horrible. The landlord. It wasn't really the landlord. It was the management company that was just horrid. You know, it was just. She was disrespectful to people. The letters that she sent to me was just disrespectful and racist. Like, I, you will be out of here in one second if you don't fill out this. I mean, and it was just a general thing. You'll be out of here in one second. Like, I've never had anybody to talk to me or send anything in a documentation form that way. Especially to be that old and to be in a uh, paraprofessional um, business, you know. So, I had a decision to make. I was like... Do I want to stay here? And not only that, you know, because you can put up with that and you say, whatever, I don't have to deal with her as long as I get to get my stuff and go. But everything was breaking down. My refrigerator didn't close. It was, they had bugs. They had bed bugs. And they refused. They used to refuse to give it and act like as if they didn't have them when all the buildings had them, you know. Um, But they'll try to make it seem as if you brought them, you know, which I knew I didn't because I didn't have anything like that to, you know. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it was that. I had a hole in my wall. I had a, um, the, the air conditioner didn't work, and it was a hole in that air conditioner they didn't want to fix. But I knew a lot about working on houses and patching up stuff because I grew up in an area where we had to do that for a living. Like, we had to learn a skill when we was kids. You had to learn how to do it. So, um, shout out to my great uncle, Marion, because... Um, which she's a millionaire, of course, but, um, to teach us those skills because it helped me later on. I was just like, I'm never going to use that, but I did. Anyhow, who I had to make a decision on whether I'm going to pay this money and keep getting harassed, you know, even though I was going through a struggling time and I barely had enough to pay or just let the cookies fall where they go and go and pursue my dreams. And I decided, I decided now it's not always, I'm not telling you to quit your job. 
I'm not telling you not to pay your rent. I'm not telling you to do any of that. You know, um, I'm not even telling you to pursue your own dreams if that's, if that's not what you want. What I'm telling you is that sometimes you have to evaluate certain things and certain things don't look as pretty, you know, as pretty as they usually are, you know. So I understand that um, after, even after I got out of that and I started that business, when I started that business, y'all, I was, <laughs> I was home, I slept in my car, I worked. Um, how I showered was that I went to the gym to go shower. Um, a lot of people didn't even know because I was so busy. And when I say I was so busy, I was so busy. Like I slept when I could. I was still working at a shelter that was helping people who was literally homeless on the street. Just like, you know, and I was just like them, just slept and, you know, worked. And I just kept working on my dream. I just kept working on my dreams. And, um, I'm not going to say it, it happened overnight because it did not have more troubles than a little bit, you know, uh, ended up meeting some other people. It was just, it was crazy. You know, um, I ended up living with someone for a little bit and this is where it helped me a lot because at that time, um, that dynamic, it helped me, um, buckle down because you know, you don't want to live with someone because I did have the opportunity to, to live with someone before, but I was like, I did not want to do that. But because I buckled down and I did that, um, it helped me to save and to catapult me to something better. But I still had to work two jobs. You know, I was there sleeping unless we all had to go, you know, go out to some function or something or something, you know, like that. Some outing or something like that. But other than that, I was working, um, just getting myself together, you know. Um, so... And it wasn't an easy road. I don't I don't know why people think everything's going to be easy. Like, oh, I just started a business and I say this and this and that. Like, it's not going to be easy. I don't give a care if the product is, is a sellable product and it, it could sell itself. There's somebody else that's buying that product. They can buy from somebody else. You got to be very creative and you have to you have to take, you know, discipline and you have to be um, into it. It's going to take a lot, you know, because. You're trying to fund your dreams while a lot of people are um, doing a lot of a lot of other things. You have to under, understand and um, understand that your dream is not everyone's dream. It's not everyone's goal, or they're never gonna want it, or they don't. Some people just don't want you to get their dreams because they're not focused on their dreams. Most people have given up on their dreams by the time they're 15. You know that's statistically 75 percent you know, um, of the population, forget about their dreams when they're 15, after they're 15, you know, so, um, <laughs> and the rest start falling off, you know, it's only the 2% that actually go for their dreams, and, and, you know, and get about the whole matrix of, so, um, yeah, but understand that you, in order to do something different, you have to be different. You know, I couldn't go out every freaking day or go out to go party and club. I had to eat at home. Sometimes I didn't, I couldn't eat. I couldn't afford to eat. I literally had to eat at the soup kitchen, which was okay for me, you know, because I served and because I volunteered and because of all of that, I didn't have to really, you know, God to really take care of people. I didn't have to worry about that. There were other times where people literally, like I said, literally, would take me and say I want you to come live with me and they'd be like no I'm not coming to live with you and then they're like you know God told me this and I do some of them I do believe God was telling them that because there's no possible way you know um there's a lot of occult people who can know that too but how I felt it it was just like okay God like you know I'm a little afraid of going to other people but just having to say a prayer and that's what they would do when I say no they would say a prayer and not only that they would feed me some of the stuff that I would never like there's no way that, you know, these people would know that I love mustard on, you know, some of my items instead of ketchup, that kind of thing, you know. Um, and it was, it's, it's kind of funky on certain things, you know, certain seasonings, all that. So, um, yeah, I just, I just have to explain that to you, you know, and it's going to feel awkward. It's going to feel bad. I'm not going to, you're going to feel like sometimes you are all alone. I cried. I cried because my family was not on board. Usually, my family, usually, even when when they say no at first, eventually they'll come around. My family never came around for my for my goals and my dreams. They never came around for that, you know. Um, even when I, when I, you know, 
was recognized for a lot of things. They'll say congratulations, but they really didn't come, come, you know, come around. And you have to understand and expect that everyone's not going to do that. There were some people who always felt and didn't even know me from a can of paint, always felt that I had something special. There were some people who I grew up who thought I was something special, you know. So you can't, you can't get upset by it. But I'm just telling you how this process is because it's going to be different. What girly? You getting tired now? It's getting a little hot. Give you some little water. But yeah, it's going to, your process is going to be so different. And I would tell you, I would advise you to follow that process because if you don't, it is going to kill you, y'all. Like, I tried to go and so, well, maybe I should go and blend and do this, but it's going to be like your future is calling you. Like, when I say your future is calling you, your future, like, all your dreams, your aspirations, all that stuff, it's it's about to call you. Like, come on. It's going to start calling you like crazy that you don't even, you don't even want to be around those people anymore. You're not going to want to be in those situations anymore. It doesn't mean that you hate them, just know that it's not for you you know um yeah (laughs) yeah i just uh, i had a and i had a situation like that myself you know recently um dealing with situations with jobs like i told you like god was telling me he was going to promote me and move me up and i'm sitting here like okay but if you've been if you've been knocked down a couple of times you know and you get back up you you like okay i got some tough skin but get knocked down to keep getting get up and then get knocked down again and get stomped and then get back up and then get stomped you know it's gonna it's gonna put a little bit of fear in you so um which is normal but my thing was i had to um girl what you about to bark for i need to get my bicycle out i think i'm a rad tonight so i literally had to um just get up and get out of my zone get out of that that fear zone because you know fear and courage well fear and courage can lie at the same time but um okay but fear fear and change it won't you know um well fear and change can they say it don't but i i do believe that fear and power empowerment don't they can't they can't lie. They can't lie in the same way. So, um, people say fear and courage. I've seen it. You know, I've, I've walked through some things where I've been so fearful of my life, but I know I have to have the courage to keep going. So I, I understand that part. You can have fear and still, um, have the courage to get on. But I know fear and empowerment, they don't, they don't, or fear, or inspiration, inspiration to kill that fear, inspiration to kill that fear more than anything. You know, um, inspiration will help you get empowerment. So, um, yeah. But I did want to let you guys know I didn't want to drift too off topic, which I think is still kind of on the topic. But just understand, things are not going to be so peachy, creamy. You're going to have to miss some of them things. I missed some of the games, some of the ballpark, some of the things. And I didn't. Need, I thought it was a curse what God was doing, but God was pushing people away out of my life. Like, and I was over there like, God, please bring them. No, he was pushing them out and I was crying and they was happy. And then years later, you know, I see them like, and I'm better. So y'all just, just do that. Just remember, if you're trying to go for something, it's, it's, it's not going to come overnight and it takes stuff. It takes, it, it costs, it costs. So yeah, hopefully something I said or done will help you on your journey. Please stay tuned to Journey to Jerusalem. Bye.